This is a little golden read-along. On the cover, you can see the name of this book. The Tawny Scrawny Lion and the Clever Monkey. Look at the picture on the cover. Now, when you hear the sound of the little golden chime, open the book to the title page. Here is the name of the story again. The Tawny Scrawny Lion and the Clever Monkey. Written by Mary Carey and illustrated by Millie Jankar. This is a story about a hungry lion who found some rabbits to feed him. Then a clever monkey discovered an even better recipe for carrot stew so that the lion would not eat him. The tawny scrawny lion was very proud of his tawny golden coat. But he didn't at all like being so scrawny. If only my dinner would stand still and let me catch it, he said to himself. But that never happened. If he wanted a zebra for dinner, the zebra always ran away. The same thing happened with giraffes and elephants. The hungrier the lion got, the more he ran, and the more he ran, the hungrier he got, and the more his ribs showed. At last, the lion met a family of plump, perky rabbits who did not run away. He would have gobbled them up, but before he could even lick his chops, they gave him a big bowl of carrot stew cooked with herbs and mushrooms and fine, fresh fish. Mmm, it was delicious. It was so good that for a while, the lion had supper with the rabbits every night. And soon, he was sleek and as fat as butter. Ah, I must do something nice for my little friends. The tawny, not so scrawny lion decided after his 18th carrot stew dinner. So, he roared at the zebra who was nibbling the carrots in the rabbit's carrot patch. <coughs> at the elephant who had trampled on some mushrooms. <coughs> he even roared at the crocodile when the crocodile tried to catch a fish in the stream. <coughs> After all, the plump perky rabbits needed that fish for their delicious carrot stew. And so the rabbits were happy and the lion was happy and full of stew. But one day, when the lion went to the rabbit's house, he found it empty. The rabbits were gone, and there wasn't a bite of stew to be seen. Dear lion, said a note on the rabbit's kettle, we have gone to visit our grandmother. Please use our kettle and make carrot stew any time you want it. That would have been fine, except that the lion's paws were so big and clumsy that he couldn't pick herbs and mushrooms for the stew. And he wasn't a good fisherman either. He took the rabbit's fishing rod and tried and tried, but the fish wouldn't bite for the hungry lion. Worst of all, the carrots in the carrot patch began to wilt in the hot sun. In a very short time, the lion was scrawny once again. He sat by the water hole and looked at his reflection. Dreadful, he said to himself. I can see every rib. Now I'll have to go back to chasing other animals for my dinners. Just then, 
A very small monkey came to the water hole for a drink. He didn't see the tawny, scrawny lion, who was sitting there quietly. But the lion saw him, and as quick as a wink, he put one huge paw on the monkey's tail. Oh dear! Exclaimed the monkey. A lion! And he covered his eyes with his hands. The tawny, scrawny lion sighed. Oh, I wish you were a zebra," he told the monkey. "You're so small that you won't begin to fill the empty place in my middle." The monkey took his hands away from his eyes and looked up at the lion. "Oh yes, I am small," he said quickly. "Hardly worth bothering with." "True," said the lion. Besides, even if you were as big as a zebra, I'd much rather have carrot stew. Carrot stew," said the monkey thoughtfully. "That's the stew with carrots in it, isn't it?" And mushrooms, and herbs, and nice fresh fish," said Tawny. I'd make it myself, but somehow I just can't do it. Everything seems to go wrong. Well, said the monkey, I will make it for you if you will lift your paw just a bit. The lion lifted his paw, and the monkey began to work, although he had never made carrot stew before. He watered the carrot patch so the carrots would be firm and fresh again. He picked herbs and mushrooms with his tiny hands, and he caught fine silvery fish with just the right bait. At last, the stew was ready. But the moment the tawny, scrawny lion tasted it. He began to cry huge lion tears. Oh, monkey! There are too many onions. He cried. Now I will eat you up. I'm sorry," said the monkey in great fright. The last lion I met liked onions. I'll make more stew. Be quick about it! Snapped the lion, who was now hungrier than ever. The monkey was very quick about it, but when the lion tasted the second batch of stew, he sneezed such a mighty sneeze that it blew the monkey way off into the stream. <laughs> Too much pepper! Roared the lion. Come out of there! Come out so I can eat you! The monkey climbed out of the water. I'm sorry again," he said. "Next time I'll use my special secret recipe. All lions like that." Well," growled the lion. "You had better hurry. I'm terribly, terribly hungry." The monkey hurried. He gathered green herbs and pulled up new carrots and caught fresh fish. Then he climbed to the top of a coconut tree and picked three big coconuts. I do hope coconut milk tastes good in carrot stew. He whispered to himself. It did. When the tawny, scrawny lion tasted the third kettle of stew, it was. Perfect. The lion ate every morsel,、mm. and then he rolled over on his back and purred. <laughs> That was a thing he hadn't done since the rabbits went to visit their grandmother. <laughs> I'll make more stew tomorrow," promised the monkey. And he made carrot stew the next day, and the day after that, 
and the day after that. Soon the lion was sleek and as fat as butter again. And, except for roaring at a zebra or an elephant now and then, there was never a cross sound out of him. When at last the rabbits came home from their grandmother's house, the monkey was ready for them with a huge kettle of stew on the fire. He always had a huge kettle of stew on the fire. He felt a lot safer that way. The rabbits and the lion and the monkey sat down together and had the best supper ever. The rabbits all agreed that carrot stew with coconut milk was much better than carrot stew without coconut milk. We'd be very pleased. If you'd stay and live with us, said the rabbits to the monkey. You, you could pick coconuts for our stew every day. I'll be glad to pick coconuts for you said the monkey politely. But if it's all the same to you, I would rather live with the lion. So the lion and the monkey went off together, and they slept soundly all night under the lion's favorite tree. The lion slept soundly because that empty place in his middle was full of good carrot stew. And the monkey slept soundly because he knew that a very small monkey could hardly have a better friend than a fat as butter lion with a large roar.